Hey, Margie here. What can you do that's going to be amazing for your balance? Improve your bone strength, increase muscle strength, increase flexibility, reduce stress, increase happiness, and just help you live more in the flow. Well, if you haven't guessed, it's Qigong and Tai Chi. And this is something I do every day. And and I see how people in my community have reaped so many benefits from it. And I'm excited about our special guest, Dr. Matt Jeffs. And Matt has over 30 years as an educator, ergonomist, consultant, and clinician. As an award-winning doctor of physical therapy, he has successfully rehabilitated over 25,000 individuals in the clinical setting. He's also a sought-after doctoral-level lecturer at multiple universities and for global governments. He is internationally requested to address worldwide conferences, professional organizations, trade groups, private companies, and executive summits. And what he's going to talk about is something he created called Bone Strong Qigong. And this is a class aimed to help people remain sharp, strong, and independent in their minds and bodies. And it's it's just something that I'm excited to share with this community because we go over the benefits of, of Qigong and Tai Chi, as well as how, as a physical therapist, what it's actually doing because it can be so powerful. So lots of great information. Stay tuned. Welcome, Matt. You can't imagine how happy I am to have you on the podcast. I'm, I'm, I do Qigong every day and I'm such a believer in this and this has helped so many people in my community. So I'm just really excited for you to share your knowledge and information with everybody. So welcome. Oh, thank you. I can't thank you enough, Margie. I've uh, followed your work for some time and uh, it's a real honor to be here to speak with you and through you, your audience. You know, it's always so funny because we met a very strange way. And I'll just share, I love to share the backstory of things. So Matt was actually, so I've taught ergonomics for many years to companies and corporations, but Matt had was teaching a program for physical therapists right at the beginning of COVID, how to teach people how to set up a home office. So I took, it was a continuing education class. So that's how we met. We didn't meet at all with Qigong. And I loved the class and I've utilized that information so much. And so that's, that's how I knew Matt. And then I've been contacting him about questions I've had and different things, possibly working together in the ergonomic sense. And then I found out that he's like a major Tai Chi Qigong person. I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. So that's sort of how we connected. And I was so thrilled to hear that, you know, that's another aspect of the, of the work you do. So anyway, it's very exciting. So you want to just tell us the backstory of how you got into, you know, here you're a physical therapist like I am, and you know, right. here you're doing major ergonomics with countries all, with them, companies all over. And how did you get into Qigong and, you know, in Tai Chi? Oh, well, thank you for asking. And uh, you're right. We both have different paths to the same door, don't we? Uh, um, it actually started... Uh, God, I, I don't want to go too far back, but I but was always- You can give us the short version, you know? <laughs> right. I was always interested in the martial arts and never had a chance to truly um, practice for reasons, you know, life gets in the way. And one day I was, uh, this was back about 2008, 2009, I was in a bookstore, big box bookstore, Barnes and Noble, I believe. And I walked past a um, display case, a revolving display with DVDs. And I remember DVDs? Well, anyway, um, one caught my eye and it was yoga. And I've always been interested in yoga and have, have followed yoga and taken lots of classes. And um, I turned the carousel around and I was looking and all of a sudden what a Tai Chi went by. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. And I pulled it back. And there was a gentleman by the name of David Dorian Ross, and he had a AMT for beginners DVD. So I was like, oh, I've got to take this. And I took it and I brought it home and I started practicing with it. And the real giveaway was the, the days I didn't practice Tai Chi and Qigong. It was really interesting. It was like 
I didn't realize its effect on me until I skipped it. And the days I skipped it, I realized I'm going back to my same old irritable self. What? <laughs> and then I would think, and I'd go, why am I so PO'd about little things? And then all of a sudden I realized, oh, I forgot my Tai Chi and Qigong this morning. So it really revealed itself by its absence. So I, I started buying more and more of this guy's Tai Chi and Qigong DVDs. And then lo and behold, he was giving a workshop a few hours from my home in St. Augustine. I grew up in St. Augustine, Florida, and he was giving a weekend workshop down in New Smyrna Beach a few hours away. And I said, I, I got to meet this guy because he's already changed my life. And I drove down there. I took a weekend uh, retreat with him and I was hooked. I, I, he's an amazing person. I can go into more in detail, but uh, I said, um, I really want to practice more of this. And I, and I did. And actually now I'm up at my cabin in, in Western North Carolina. I'm just outside this window behind me right here, about a football field or two is the great Smoky Mountains National Park. So nice. the front of the, yeah, the front of the cabin looks out on 30 miles of Blue Ridge and the back here, I could literally walk back into the great Smoky Mountains. So I, um, started teaching a brand of Tai Chi he developed called Tai Chi Fit. And it was a way to make it Tai Chi and Qigong, something that fits the fitness center environment. And I have a long history like you do with uh, physical therapy and working out and exercising. I was also a chairman of a YMCA for a number of years at one time. Long story short, I brought that to this fitness center. They were so, uh, again, this was a hospital-owned fitness center, and they were so intrigued by it. They, I asked them, I said, hey, would it be okay if uh, we brought him over from Huntington Beach, California, and he could do some teacher trainings here? And he did. We did it two years in a row, and in fact, he stayed in this upper floor bedroom I'm in right now. This is my upper floor office and bedroom, and we did this uh, where I... I'll say I co-taught, but I, honestly, I was just his gopher and chauffeur, which was fine. Again, this man is a grandmaster. He has eight uh, gold medals in national competition, four international medals. He actually taught on the Chinese university, not university, Chinese um, wushu team, team for the country of China. That's how accomplished he is. And uh, I was thrilled with all of that. And... I continued to teach his practice. COVID hit. When I came back, they said, do you want to resume? And I said, of course. Uh, but I've kind of developed my own thing here. And I always defer to my the grandmaster who taught me. But what you and I can appreciate is we have this physical therapist background. And add, there's an ethic, to, as you know, to uh, physical therapy, and that is we meet people wherever they are, which means we meet people whether they're wheelchair bound or walker bound or bed bound, we have to meet them where they are and make them successful at that level. So I took that ethos and I also took some other things we can get into how I wound up kind of making it our own, my own, and that's what we came up with be strong Qigong, or in our case, bone strong Qigong. And the reasoning behind this that I hope you find interesting is, as you know, in lifestyle medicine, we want, um, we realize that lifestyle changes can do their most good the earlier you adopt them. And there's tons, as you know, of literature on Tai Chi and Qigong. In fact, um, I started teaching CEU level courses in this for people, PTs and OTs like you and me through Summit Professional Education and others. And as, as we know from our profession, everything is a progression. So you start out with simple and then you go to intermediate and then from intermediate, you go to advanced. So that's where we differed. And I still, again, defer to my grandmaster who taught me uh, the basics. Um, but I took this more in the, the, the uh, approach that we understand, and that is we have to meet people where they are, no matter their activity or ability level, and then we have to have a progression that progresses them on. So 
to summarize, uh, over the years, I've probably learned and practiced 60 or 80 different moves. And it dawned on me one day, and you'll appreciate this, Margie. Um, gee whiz, this Tai Chi and Qigong stuff looks an awful lot like PNF. And for your viewers who may or may not be, um, yeah, they don't know, they don't know what PNF is unless they're a physical therapist for, or, or an occupational therapist. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, to, to summarize that, I mean, we don't have to do a deep dive. PNF stands for proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. Boy, that's a mouthful. But what it is, is it basically allows movement to be divided into progression. So I started looking at these 60, 80 or more Tai Chi moves and I started to categorize them and I realized, hmm, this whole category is bilateral symmetrical. That's a PNF term. In other words, the left and right side of the body do the same thing at the same time. Then I realized, hmm, that's interesting. Here's an intermediate category that's bilateral asymmetrical, which means we work off center. And then finally, we have bilateral reciprocal where things get very interesting. Now, where this fits all into the Tai Chi Qi Gong categories is Qi Gong is essentially Tai Chi without the footwork. So it's very, you know, you, your feet don't move an awful lot. And that's beautiful because when it gets into bone strength and density and that sort of thing, the, the, the beginner stuff is a lot of, for lack of a better term, squats and mini squats. So it's a lot of leg work that's deceptive because we pay so much attention to our breath through the movement and our hands through the movement. Then when we get into that intermediate category of bilateral asymmetrical, we realize, well, wow, this whole group of, of movements is really weight shifts, lunges, and mini lunges. So now we have that leg work working into it. And then, like I say, when we get into the bilateral reciprocal, which is more of the advanced, really going from Qigong to a mix of Tai Chi and Qigong to finally the advanced stuff is more Tai Chi, that's where the footwork comes in. And that's where the, the leg work gets a little more challenging. We might be doing single leg standing, or we might be doing, you know, single leg balancing or deep squatting. And um, it winds up being this sensible progression. And that's all I did was basically realize these two worlds could meet. PNF and Tai Chi Chi Gong can meet perfectly, overlap perfectly. And it allows what David Dorian would describe was uh, the ability of a uh, student or a person attending to have success from day one. That's the important thing. Uh, there's plenty of Tai Chi and Qigong out there, but often what it's expecting is in its tradition that you have to meet the master. In other words, you have to work hard. There's a great story that David Dorian uh, talks about called eating bitterness. Uh, it's actually an old martial arts phrase and that's beautiful and it's got its place. And I can tell stories about that, but in reality, that is counter to the ethos that you and I learned in rehab. And that is people don't come to us. We come to people, which means they've got to be successful in the very first class, the very first try. And that's what the difference really is. And, and that's what I developed. I've been teaching it at this hospital owned fitness center. And when I'm down in Florida, I do kind of a six and six thing now, six, uh, I still have the cottage on the intercoastal in, in St. Augustine. I have fitness centers down there and I usually wind up with a couple of dozen people attending each class and they're dedicated and they're thrilled because nobody showed them that they could do this like on the first try. You know, there's so many things that I love about this, but I can't agree with you more because having that physical therapy background, especially for people with osteoporosis and people, who, you know, we have to be safe. And, yeah. you know, when we look at it from the lens of a physical therapist who's looking at the body and knowing exactly what we want to accomplish, we can sort of mix the best of Eastern medicine and the best with the best of Western medicine. So uh, to me, it's just such a win-win and just yes. such a great approach. And that's why I'm 
so excited. I, I mean, I haven't told everybody that you're gonna you're coming to my community and doing a class that you created called Bone Strong Qigong, totally right. really specific to bone health. So I'm so excited about that. But I think that's just wonderful because it's interesting. I just have to tell you a funny story. So years ago, years ago, um, I mean, it was a really long time ago because I was pregnant with my son and he's now 30, 33. So, um, you know, it was quite a while ago. And I remember there was a local Tai Chi and I'd always wanted, I'd taken a couple of classes for physical therapists, but I wanted to do when I want, really wanted my husband to learn it. So I took him to this grand master, whoever was doing this local class and he didn't speak. He just said, follow me. And there were women had the worst posture I've ever seen, very rounded, and the movements were actually making them worse. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this person, you know, could really be sustaining a fracture because he didn't care, as you said, just follow me. And yes, the movements had great potential, but not for her and not the way she was doing it. So that's why to me, the physical therapy background can really ensure the safety. And we will mention the precautions so people know no, don't do that bent over, you know, the things that they can do. So it's, it's, I just think it's just a great combination. And yeah, uh, it's, yeah, it is. And again, to, again, not to sing my teacher's praises too much, but he comes from a kinesiology background. So he's trained in kinesiology and that helps. And the way he taught me and the way he teaches is alignment. We talk a lot about alignment. In fact, the way I lay out my courses in classes is, there's a pose we're all familiar with in yoga called the tree pose where the hands are overhead and you're up on one foot, your, your foot is on your knee and you're standing in this tall pose. The tree pose in Tai Chi and Qigong is what is often called hugging the tree. It's actually called holding the urn, but it's a posture we go into between those intermediate sessions to let everybody just pause, close their eyes if they can, if they don't have balance issues, if they do, we teach them other things to do with their eyes, but just feel the chi, for lack of a better term, the energy push, pulsing through them and just pause and feel that before we go into the next section. And that's vital because it's funny, again, your interest is, it has been in bone health and mine has always been in cognitive health. So. I was always looking my whole life. I, I, you know, I, I studied transcendental meditation when I was 17 years old, back in like the late seventies. And I've also taken a lot of training in things like guided imagery, self-hypnosis, meditation, all these things. And they're all wonderful. They're all different paths to the same door. But the problem, again, this is a physical therapist thing. So I know you'll appreciate this. The problem was, wait a minute. A lot of these meditative techniques that I just described were developed in ancient cultures where people chopped wood, carried water, hunted game, and tended garden. They led very physical lives. After the that was all accomplished and they were lucky enough to have a meal in their belly for one day, you know, at the end of the day, they earned the right to sit in front of a flickering candle or a guttering fire and focus on their breath and meditate. Translate that now to the 21st century. We sit too much. So we've engineered movement out of a lot of our lives. And as a result, sitting meditation isn't quite the fit it used to be ergonomically speaking. So I was always after, and that's what interested me initially in yoga was, how do we get meditation and movement together? and get two birds with one stone here. How do we work? How do we calm the mind while strengthening the body? And yoga has its place. I have a saying about yoga. I love yoga, but it doesn't love me back. <laughs> 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 which, which means I've encountered a few injuries over the years attempting yoga and, and I've solved that. But I found that Tai Chi and Qigong is something that is has much more open arms. There are many more people who can do it. You, you know, look at any video and you will see, you know, an old crowd doing it and a young crowd and everything in between, people who are heavy, people who are lean, all body types can do this successfully. So that gets back to that physical therapist ethos of 
got to meet people where they are. I can't be exclusionary. I have to be inclusive. And that's, I think, what drives you and me. That's the way we were trained. And they're not going to beat that out of us, I'm afraid. So we're always going to approach things that way. So let's talk about the benefits because, you know, to me, after, I always tell people, because one of the most important things as we get older, if we don't use it, we lose it. And that happens with balance. And I, and that's such a risk factor for falls and fractures. You know, a lot of people think, okay, well, I'll take my medicine, I'll do all this. But if you lose your balance, you know, you're going to fall. And that's one of the major reasons that people have fractures. So if we could really work on our balance, that's so huge. And this, to me, this is my favorite way. And research has proven how effective it is. And I see this, there's a program in the state of New Jersey, and we threw in some Tai Chi balance exercises. And people said, you know, I tripped and I really feel I would have fallen had I not been practicing those moves. So what, tell us, because you've been working with people for so many years doing this, like what have you seen with the improvements? Well, it's something that, uh, let's take a broad view and then we'll get a little more specific. So from the broad view in my ergonomics classes, I'm always explaining through U.S. Department of Labor, Bureau of Labor Statistics data, there's three big categories of what we'll call ergonomic injuries. The first one we all recognize always have the strain, sprains, aches, and pains. The second category, interestingly, is slips, trips, and falls. Why do we have so many slips, trips, and falls? They're almost as much as the strains and sprains. And then the third category, and this is interesting as well, is distraction. We have what's a category they call struck by objects or equipment, and that's because we have a distracted workforce nowadays. We have these things in our lives that are always pinging and popping and buzzing and drawing our attention away from the here and now. And what the research has shown is it's eroded attention spans after a while. We'll get to the distra distraction thing in a minute. Let's talk about the balance that you, you were talking about. The problem ergonomically and else, elsewise is because those of us of a certain vintage have seen over the past 40 years um, that people uh, are working longer than ever. The average U.S. worker for a sense of scale, back in the 1970s, based on your uh, U.S. Department of Labor statistics, the average worker was in their early 20s, 20, 21, 22. Today, the average worker is in their mid-40s, 45, 46, 47. Why? Well, it's because those of us of a certain vintage have watched booms and busts over the past four decades in the economy. We don't have pensions anymore. We have... Um, 401ks, which means we're all bolted to the same roller coaster called the stock market. So we see it rise. Oh, good. I'm looking forward to my retirement. And then it falls. And then we're like, I guess I'm going to be working longer. Where does this all fit into slips, trips, and falls? Well, we have an aging workforce and we have people that used to stumble now fall because many of them have had sedentary jobs. Their jobs have forced them to sit. And you know, and I know when we sit, we're only using a quarter of our body weight and, and movement. And then what used to be a stumble becomes a fall. So that's the big picture as far as it goes. Now, as far as the uh, getting a little more granular, what we realize, again, this is another form of lifestyle medicine, is the earlier that you can practice any type of balance activity, the more it's going to stick and the less the potential deterioration towards that fall and that heaven forbid broken hip or something like that. And so that's why I wanted to steer this because you know, and I know there's reams of research on this. I have downstairs in uh, my lower floor, a bookshelf and I've got on it, the Harvard medical school guide to Tai Chi and Qigong. And there's 900 studies just in that book. And that's from 2013. There's more studies now. So we understand its value in terms of every type of system, including our musculoskeletal system. And we have to get this to folks where it can do the most good. So again, as I described earlier, what I've seen is people now suddenly, they, they have a reason to practice a moving meditation 
And through that moving meditation, I always tell them after the class, they're going to walk away with three things. After their first class, number one, tonight you're going to get one of the best night's sleep you've got in a long time it's because you've practiced a lot of breath work with movement. And I'm, I'm always leading people through the breath work and the moving. Number two, you're going to notice that things that used to tick you off don't. And that's because of the concept of yin and yang. And yin and yang means there's a time to push and there's a time to receive or not retreat, but allow something to glance off of you. And that's what I found more powerful about Tai Chi and Qigong than any type of sitting meditation technique. And that was it's practical application of sitting meditation. And then you're actually practicing something. So later on that day, if someone cuts you off in traffic, you're just kind of like, eh, like that. Whereas if you hadn't practiced that day, you might be shaking your fist and getting all balled up about it. That's some of the difference that's hidden in it. And then the third thing I explain to everybody that they'll experience is in about 48 hours, your legs are going to be telling you, what was I just doing? And that's because you didn't realize over the past hour of the class we spent together, you did about 60 or 80 squats, 60 or 80 lunges, 60 or 80 like maybe not 60 or 80 single leg stands and, and that sort of thing, but enough of it. And it's where you, but you were focused on your breath and you were focused on your hand movement and you didn't realize you were rising and falling in these mini squats and mini lunges and stuff like that. And about 48 hours from now, you're going to curse me, but that's okay. I'm used to it, you know, and I would explain <laughs> to them, you're going to feel this in your legs. And then it's not all legs. One of the things I, I do, and again, I love speaking with a physical therapist of your stature about this because <laughs> I know I'm speaking your language. I will tell people now, if you want the upper body benefits, put on some cuff weights or put the cuff weights around your hands and do the same movements with cuff weights in your hands. And the next thing, you know, after the class, you're just like, oh my gosh, I feel so strong. It's a different sensation than going into the gym and doing barbell curls and things like that. You know, and I know those are linear movements, cardinal plane movements, but Qigong and Tai Chi moves are all functional. They're all PNF. They're all diagonals. They're all these sort of moves. And with a one or two pound cuff weight on your wrist or in your hand, it's amazing the upper body workout you get as well. And again, at the end of the class, it's a totally different feel. It's not exhaustive. It's energized. You're like, wow, all of a sudden you're reaching for something like a gallon of milk. And you're like, this used to have me, my shoulder buckling. And now I feel as strong as a tree. I don't know how they figured it out. But again, this stuff is hundreds, if not thousands of years old. And all we're doing is applying it to our modern uh, Western sensibilities. You know, Matt, that's what I love about this because everybody has to find what works for them. And when we're talking about the bones and overall health, this has so many benefits. So it does have the mind body. And I'm very much like you. I meditate. I'm a very much believer. And if I don't do my practices, you know, I don't, I can't function. And so I need all these practices. And I think, and also with people with any, any, any issue, but with bones and osteoporosis, um, cortisol, the stress hormone, reduces the bone building cells. So it's really, really important uh, that that we deal with this. But this is a nice way because we're getting the movement, we're getting resistance, whether we're using the weights or whether we're using our body, we're getting resistance, weight bearing, balance. And the other piece is that we're we're opening meridians and we're opening, you know, there's so many other other aspects of the mind body connection and Eastern medicine benefits we're getting. So it, instead of just doing an exercise, you know, when you're doing these Qigong movements or Tai Chi, you're getting just so many things in one and it feels so good. It just, yes. oh, to me, it's just so relaxing. And I think, you know, people initially, some people think it's boring. They think this, that, but once they do it and they, just like you said, you become more resilient because, yes. you know, things don't bother you as much. And it's just, it's just such an amazing practice. So I'm just, 
really excited that we're going to offer this class specifically for bones and all levels can participate. And it's just, it's just really exciting because I, I yeah. Like you, I, I, I'm always thrilled and, uh, I pause to appreciate where two different cul cultures came to the same, uh, conclusion. So for instance, if I can, if I may, um, couple of things. There's an area between our shoulder blades. You mentioned meridians, so I'll mention some of these things. There's an area between our shoulder blades, just below our shoulder blades, that's known as the Dajue point. And one of the things that I do in my class, again, from the physical therapist perspective, this is where I differ from my uh, shifu or teacher or sensei, however you want to explain it, was I start with warm-ups. I do that to calibrate the interoception and the proprioception, our breath and our movement. And I work from the head all the way down, starting with the yoga neck roll, so that we get our breath cor cor uh, corroborated uh, with our um, semicircular canals and our inner ears. Then we work down into the dodge waypoint. I have a series of stretches and warm-ups. Some of them are stretches you and I know from physical therapy. Others are some of the ones that borrowed from Qigong and Tai Chi warmups. Anyway, there's a point at, at the Dodge Way point where we do these uh, squeezes, these shr shrugs, rolls, and shoulder squeezes. And isn't it interesting? That Dodge Way point happens to be what we know in Western medicine as an area that, that is a concentration of what's known as brown fat. For those of you who are Familiar, this is healthy fat we have in our body. It's brown because it's mitochondrial rich. That is, the mitochondria are the energy centers of the cells. That's what makes the fat brown. When we do these dajue stretches and warm-ups, we're literally wringing out those, that area between the shoulder blades of that brown fat and causing us to squeeze some of that energy, for lack of a better term, into our bloodstream. And it always fascinates me when two cultures come to the same conclusion. Another one is an area known as the lower Dantian. And I usually have my classes cross their thumbs over their belly buttons and then cross their fingers like so. And where their hands overlap is an area basically between their belly button and their privates, right in between. And I say right here is where the ancient martial arts calls the lower Dantian, the seat of chi. You and I know that in Western medicine as the core. So we came to the same place. And you and I also know as physical therapists trained in kinesiology, that that's also the center of gravity. So all these things like coalesce and come to the same conclusion. And it's so fun to explain to people Here's what, what we, how we arrived at it uh, in the West. Here's how they arrived at it at the East. And guess what? Different paths to the same door. They came to the same place. And knowing this core is your center of gravity means this is where all your strength comes. You know, and I know we've both worked with elite athletes over our career that when we want someone to hit a baseball further or a tennis serve harder or anything like that, the punch or the kick doesn't come from the arms or legs. It comes from the core. And it's fascinating to me that when different cultures arrive at these same conclusions and it's like, aha, see, we're all human beings and we all have different approaches to the same conclusions. I love that. <laughs> and it is so powerful. So what have you seen? I mean, I've seen people like everything gets better, arthritis, get, you know, all sorts of different, what have you, because you've been working with this so long. So I'd love you to share what's possible. I mean, I see people who were practicing, you know, in their nineties, you know, and they're amazing. And it's just, it's so life-changing in terms of how their function has changed since they've incorporated this practice. What, what have you seen since you've been teaching this for so long? Well, again, I have to tip a hat to Haywood uh, Regional Medical Center, who owns the Haywood Health and Fitness Center, where I've held this class for five years. And um, uh, since it's a hospital and fitness center, 55,000 square feet with an indoor heated pool and the whole shebang, um, I've seen all kinds of people come to that class. Some people come in walkers, some people come with canes, some people have been 
frankly, given up on by the Western medical model. They've gone to all, I, there's a guy named Dave, I call him Zen Master Dave. Uh, he has been, uh, he's seen the biggest names in medicine. He's gone from Johns Hopkins, you name it, to Mayo. And there's only so much they can do for him, but he comes to this class religiously and he credits, you know, he's here because he practices this, that he practices this. Uh, he's always at every class. I, I actually put a chair out for him because he refuses to sit. He's got to stand and do this. So there's always a chair he can hang on to. And I've had other people as well. People come in with walkers. I, I'm always thrilled to see that either we reverse things or we stall its progression. So again, where, where the rest of Western medicine is shrugged and, and thrown up their hands, they keep coming back to this because they know they're not, they're, the rate of decline, for lack of a better term, has stalled. And he's still functional, they're still functional. These are the, some of the people that I'll have attend the class. Um, but again, I, I explain to people because I always have new people in, in each class and I explain, uh, there's no left right here. There's no right here. There's only this side of the room, or if I'm doing it online, there's this side of the screen and that side of the screen. You, if we start talking left and right, you're going to get tied up like playing Twister for those who remember Twister, uh, but, uh, the game. But if you'll just follow along, you'll find that your mirror neurons, that's a controversial term amongst um, neurobiologists. Some claim they exist, others claim they don't. Regardless, the monkey see, monkey do aspect of it, that um, you'll be able to accomplish more than you realize. You'll be able to reach outside of your base of support. You'll be able to work within your base of support. You'll get used to what I call shifting weight on a figure eight. In other words, moving that center of gravity within that base of support. And that's where the stability comes. That's when they realize, wow, you know, I actually did some yard work this weekend. They'll come in and tell me stuff like that. Or I, I, I actually uh, walked in a theme park. I haven't done that in a long time. So I hear stories like that. People come in. But again, I'll circle back to I deliberately made this more challenging as much as I want to help the geriatric population, and there's tons of research that it helps the geriatric population, like anything in lifestyle medicine, the benefits compound. So the younger you can begin this sort of thing, the better. And so you, like you say, there are people out there that uh, uh, see, you know, would think, oh, this, I'm not, you know, it's not like a regular group aerobics class. I'm not winded. I'm not this, I'm not that. And I'm like, Give it 48 hours. Tell me how your legs feel the day after tomorrow. And usually they come in going, wow, I didn't realize uh, I was using muscles in your class that I never, and, and that's the beauty. And the, let me say the deceptive beauty of this all is that you're focusing on other things. Trust me, I have to make sure you're breathing properly. I have to make sure your alignment is right. I have to make sure you're moving in the right sequence because there are people in a class that'll want to rush it. You'll see them going through, they're flapping their arms and it's like, nah, pay attention to the weight shift, pay attention to the lower body. Uh, there's a, a turn in the trunk here. It's not merely waving the arms. It's this turn of the trunk. And um, they're the ones who come back and realize I got to keep doing this. So those are some, uh, you know, I don't have any uh, more specific anecdotes than that, but I hope that's a flavor. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the other thing is this is evidence-based. You know, we talked about all the yeah. research on, on balance, but also they've shown improvements in bone density when they did meta-analysis and looked at all the research put together. They've also shown bone markers, you know, improvements, changes in bone markers for the positive. So, you know, this, this is just great stuff. I mean, it, I it, it's. It's really wonderful. I just, before we end, you, you talk about something called embodied cognition. Do you want to just explain yeah. what that is? Cause I think that's interesting. It is. And it's something also that's ancient. So often in my classes, I'll tell the story of Abraham Lincoln. And this was taught to me by, uh, I used to have a, a an award-winning radio show back, uh, in the uh, turn of the century, so to speak. 
And one of my guests was Senator George McGovern. For those who remember Senator George McGovern, he was a regular on my program. He wrote a book about Lincoln and we got into this discussion. I said, is it true? Because I read that Abraham Lincoln uh, you, used to aggravate his law partner. First of all, he was self-taught. He only had one year of formal education and he became an attorney and we know where he went from there. But he had this process that kind of gets to embodied cognition. Lincoln used to write up his legal briefs before he went down to the courthouse to argue for his client. But then he would walk around the law offices acting out his legal briefs. So he'd speak to aloud and he would gesture towards the rafters and all that. And finally, one day his law partner said, hey pal, <laughs> I got work to do here as well. And the problem I have is, you know, I read silently. I was formally trained to, to read silently. Do you think you could too? And Lincoln's response gets right to embodied cognition. He said, well, I suppose I can. But when I read silently, I only use one faculty. When I read aloud and gesture, I use one, two, three, four faculties. And don't you know, 150 some odd years ago, Abraham Lincoln figured out that that's how our cognition works best. The more that we do, the more gray matter we involve, the more the four lobes of our cerebral cortex is involved, the, more, the less we have to memorize and the more we actually embody the work. So I won't do it here, but maybe in our class, I show people a simple model of how to make a brain with their two hands, folding their thumbs and, and like this, and I walk them through the neuroevolution of the brain and how the prefrontal cortex provides us a manual override of all the structures beneath it. So this embodied cognition is something we can practice anytime throughout the day. And that's what makes it so resonant and something, again, that translates into their lives. And that's a little different than sitting meditation. That's one of the powerful aspects of, of moving meditation. Wow. Well, this is so great. And this is so for everybody listening, for those who want to join us, we'd love to have you. And it won't be, people won't be tired from this class because it's more of an introductory and you'll start learning just the basics and it's for all levels. And, right. and, but you know, regardless, Qigong and Tai Chi are so important. And for people, you know, I guess it's, if you do have osteoporosis, just make sure someone, the person teach, am I right? What would you tell people if they're if, if they're just in general looking for someone in their area who could do this, do you have any suggestions? Yeah, they could uh, uh, look up, uh, again, my teacher, David hyphen Dorian Ross. David, there's his first name is David Dorian, David hyphen Dorian Ross. And Taiji Fit is something he's taught around the U.S. So there could be a, a teacher in their area. And I would look towards somebody who's maybe more along the physical occupational therapist realm. Uh, again, I taught eight, seven, 800 physical and occupational therapists this around the U.S. for some at professional education. I hope to resume it because I call this, you know, I hope you'll, I think you'll appreciate this, Margie. I call this metaphysical therapy. So that's a play on words. In other words, meta being we're taking physical therapy and then we're moving up into the mind body space and realizing, like you're saying, you can positively affect bone density. You can positively affect musculoskeletal health. You can positively affect neuromuscular health and mind body health and calmness and all these birds with one stone. To me, this is 21st century physical therapy. This is where we're going. I love it. And it's so life-changing. And that's what I try to bring to people, like things, you know, that aren't hard. This is not really hard. This is just feels really good, doable, yeah. and can completely transform your life, as you mentioned, in so many ways. So I'll have all the links. And I'll also have the link to, um, you know, to your ergonomics, because you do, sure. do, you know, there are people who are miserable in their home office and you do individual consultations. So, you know, why don't you give them how people can contact you if they're interested in that type of work. Can you just give well, they're all, sure. They're, they're always well, uh, welcome to visit my website, which is abilityondemand.com. That's three words all put together. A-B-I-L-I-T-Y on demand, abilityondemand.com. 
com. They can visit there and they, and there they can see, they can call or text me, or they can email me at Matt at abilityondemand.com. That's my email address. And I'm, I'm happy to discuss any of this with anybody and help them with their decision-making in any way I can. Oh, well, that's great. In our class, here's the good news. Our class is August 25th at three o'clock PM Eastern daylight time. However, if you're listening to this podcast and it's finished, you'll still be able to get the replay. It'll always be available. So this, you know, and I, I'm really excited because it is a mix of safe, effective movements, both for the mind and the body and the bones. So <laughs> right. anyway, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining and sharing all of this with us. And I'm so excited for our class. Margie, I can't thank you enough. I, again, I follow your work and I appreciate the good and important work you've done for so long. I'm honored that you would have me address your august audience. I can't wait to join you. I hope you enjoyed learning about Qigong and Tai Chi. And now see how this could be a wonderful addition to any exercise program. It's something I do every day. And it's just added so much to my life in terms of relaxation, strength, movement. Can't say enough good things. And I want to let you know again about the class that Matt's doing on August 25th. And it's at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. But the good news is if you can't attend live or if you're listening to this episode after the class has already happened, there's a replay and you can certainly still reap all the benefits from watching the replay. So thanks so much for tuning in. I really look forward to seeing you on the next episode.